In this video we're going to tie a little streamer called the Bow River Bugger. First thing we're going to do is start with some O2O lead wire and a Tiemco 5263 streamer hook. I'm going to tie in this lead wire and cover up the middle portion of the shank of the hook and I'm going to leave a little area right up by the head of the fly here. I'm going to leave that free or bare. Next thing I'm going to do is take some 6 op black thread and just tie through that wire a few times making sure it's secure and it won't roll or move on me. Doesn't have to be pretty, just got to cover it all up and secure it. Now the first material we're going to tie in is going to be some black marabou and I'm going to take just the tips of two plumes of marabou and even up those tips as much as I can. Now you can use woolly bugger marabou for this. You can also use blood coil marabou. Either do the trick just fine. Then I'm going to take those two pieces and I'm going to tie them in so that they're about half of the length to about three quarters of the length of the shank. If you like a longer tail, you could tie it in up to the length of the shank of the hook. I usually do tie mine in just a little longer. I tie mine in about three quarters to a, the length of the shank of the hook. Then we need to tie in our flash. For this, I'm just going to take three strands or four strands of blue, electric blue, or dark blue, either one works fine, flashaboo. But you got to be real careful not to overdo it. Just a hint of flash on this fly, just enough to catch those that fish's attention. I tie it right on top of the shank of the hook and trim it to the length of the tail. Next material is going to be some copper brassy sized wire. Tie that in right along the side of the shank of the hook, nice and tight and firm, all the way back here to the bend. Next material is going to be some medium woolly bugger chenille in a dark olive color, darkest olive you can find. And we're going to tie that in right there at the tail and then we're going to take our thread forward all the way up to where we stopped our lead wire. Then I'm going to take that medium chenille and just build up a nice smooth even body, as even as you can get it. Then we can capture the chenille, trim it out of there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in a grizzly feather. We want to undersize this feather slightly. I like to use a whiting high and dry rooster cape feather for this. And we're just going to tie that in right there at the head. I'm going to take that feather, just give it one solid wrap around to start, and then spiral the feather back down the shank of the hook. Once I get to the back here, I am going to capture the feather with the wire and wrap the wire up the body, segmenting the body but also locking down that grizzly feather. And once I get up here to the front, I'm going to capture that copper wire. Don't worry if you trap any of those fibers. It's not the end of the world. They're all going to get covered up and trimmed up kind of here at the head of the fly anyways. Then you can trim out the grizzly feather. Trim out any loose fibers that got trapped. Then I usually like to take my fingers and just kind of swoop everybody back and lay down a couple more wraps. Now for the next step. 
we're going to tie in a deer hair collar for this fly. So I'm going to take a really chunky, generous little clump of deer hair, trim it away, pull out all the, all the fuzzies from the butt ends of the deer hair, and drop it into a stacker. helps to have a nice big stacker when you're working with large clumps of deer hair. Give it a good rough stacking. Any of the trapped butt end fibers you just pull out of there. There we are. And that collar isn't going to be quite as dense as I want it to be. So you can do one of two things. You can tie it in and then tie in a second collar. But what I'm going to do is just set it on my table very carefully, trim out another generous clump, and just do the same thing. Drop it in your stacker. And once you get both clumps ready to go, just very carefully mesh them up together here. And once you have a nice dense clump of deer hair, I like to measure it out. I like a nice, short little dense collar. I just measure it out and I like to trim my deer hair to the length of the collar. It just saves me a little bit of hassle in trimming. Then I do a loose wrap of thread, second loose wrap of thread, then I can let go and let that collar spin around the shank of the hook and before I pull too tight I'm just going to take my thread and jump it up and I'm going to push all that deer hair back as tight as I can just push it back onto the body and you can trim out the butt ends. Any long fibers or long hairs that might not have gotten stacked all the way, you can just Pull those out of there. Then you can bite through that deer hair a couple times just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I usually push it back once more just for good measure. Now you can do one of two things at this point. You can leave the, the collar there and just expect to trim around it once you finish up the head of the fly or we can wrap some wire around it to help keep it out of the way. So we'll try wrapping just a little bit of wire around it just to keep it out of the way when we're trimming the head of the fly. So I just take some lead wire I'm just going to pull the collar back 
I'm going to take that lead wire with some nice tight wraps and wrap it forward on the collar. That way it won't go anywhere. Now the next thing we're going to do is take another big whopping clump of deer hair here. Pull out all the fuzzy fibers again. And I like to trim the tips of the deer hair off. Just exposing kind of the back end of all that deer hair. Then we're going to take it and do a nice loose wrap of thread, second loose wrap of thread. Then I can bite down and control the spin of that deer hair around the shank of the hook. Then I'm going to take it all and compress it back as carefully as I can here, but still firm. Wrap through it a couple more times. And I'll swoop it all back out of the way and jump my thread just in front of all of it and lay down a wrap right behind the eye in front of all the deer hair. And work it all back. I usually kind of twist it, pack it, you should be able to gain about a hook eye's length of room here. There we go, we have just a little room. Before I finish, I'm gonna take a little bit of white or bleached deer hair. This is gonna make the mouth part of the fly. Just a little bit of it. Lay it there on top and do your loose wrap and just let it spin around the shank of the hook here. Work your way to the eye. Where you can whip finish. Trim out your thread, then we can trim all that deer hair. I like to just take a razor blade and just do a nice flat cut down the underside of the fly. Kind of all the way back there to the back. Then I like to bend the razor blade. I just take it and kind of bend it carefully. And we'll do an upward sweeping cone on the fly. Once you have a good kind of base trim, you can finish sculpting with your scissors if you need to.
and you can take your your wire fluff everything back up trim out any of the extra long pieces I usually trim a few away from the underside of the fly here go And eventually, you kind of just have to call it good enough. I could sit there and trim all day and try to make it perfect, but eventually, you do have to stop and not trim all of it away. I usually like to just kind of puff up that collar. I like a nice, wide, sculpting profile on this fly. And that is the Bow River Bugger. You can fish it on the dead drift, you can strip it back, but a very deadly little fly imitates a, a minnow pattern or a, a sculpin. Both are popular forage for big Montana rainbows and browns. And that is the Bow River Bugger.